Hey folks, I wanted to describe two groups that are not isomorphic in a creative way of, of showing that. So the groups that we'll be looking at are first of all, the rational numbers under addition and the non-zero rationals. I put this star here to mean non-zero rationals under multiplication. Okay. So, Q star means that zero is excluded. And any multiplicative group, for it to be a group, you have to exclude zero because the multiplicative identity is one and then zero wouldn't have a multiplicative inverse because you can't multiply zero by anything and get, and get one. So let's pause, you know, what is an isomorphism? I have it um, down below. An isomorphism between two groups is a one-to-one -one and onto function. In other words, a bijective function such that the group operation is preserved, okay? And this is written in multiplicative notation. Or I guess it's using a dot for the operation in G and circle for the operation in H. Um, There are many, many possible bijections that you can consider between these two sets, the rationals and the non-zero rationals. So the number of possible one-to-one -one and onto functions or bijections is just enormous that you could consider. So you can't just go through and look at all bijections and rule them out one by one. There's easily an infinite number of bijections between the rationals and the non-zero rationals. Nevertheless, we're going to show that there's no possible isomorphism between them. Okay, so here's how we're going to do it. Indeed, if we had an isomorphism, I'll call it phi from the rationals under addition to the non-zero rationals under multiplication. Then certainly we'd have to map some input rational number to negative one, okay? Just because this is a one-to-one -one and onto map. So for some input rational, we'd have phi of that input is equal to negative one, right? You know, to be an onto map for any possible rational besides zero, such as negative one, we're gonna have to find some input rational, call it little q, such that our map takes this little q to negative one, okay? But then what we're gonna do is we're gonna apply this isomorphism property that we'll, we'll have to have, okay? So one way you could write Q in this additive group is Q is just a rational number. So Q is equal to Q over two plus Q over two, okay? Sure, you know, in this additive group of rationals, I can always take a rational number and divide it in two, and then think of that rational number Q as Q over two plus Q over two. But now I can apply this group isomorphism property, okay? So this right here is the left-hand side 
where A and B are both Q over two and they've been combined using addition. And so now I'm gonna write down the right-hand side, phi of A combined with phi of B or phi of Q over two combined with phi over Q of two, uh, phi of Q over two combined with phi of, phi of Q over two, where the operation is now gonna be multiplication. So this would have to be equal to phi of Q over two times phi of Q over two. All right. Another way to write a number times itself is just that number squared. So do you all see the contradiction now? But um, negative one is not the square. of any element in Q star. There's nothing that phi of Q over two could map to in Q star that could squared equal negative one, right? No rational number squared is, is negative. Every rational number squared is, is uh, non-negative. Um, so sure, negative one is the square of i in the complex numbers, but we're trying to get an isomorphism to this group, q star, not to anything in the complex numbers. So hence, no such isomorphism exists. I think it's a cool proof. It's very hands-on. It's quite creative how you might come up with it. If you wanted to abstract away a little bit, you might say these groups are not isomorphic because um, in this group, you have, um, you have an element of order two, I guess, like negative one squared is equal to the identity. But in this group, you have no elements of order two that's not quite how we arrange this proof, but maybe it's related and it would be a different proof. That these two groups are not isomorphic. If they were, you'd have to have like, if you had an element of one order in one group, you'd have to have an element of that same order in the other group. But here, negative one is an element of order two because negative one squared is the multiplicative identity. But here, no elements have order two. They're either zero, it's finite order or they're non-zero and all the non-zero elements here have infinite order. You add a non-zero element to itself however many times and you never get back to zero to add a divide identity. Okay, so I guess that's a different proof that these two groups are not isomorphic, but we did this very explicit proof that these two groups are not isomorphic. Something would have to map to negative one and then take that something and split it into two parts. So we'd have to be able to write negative one as some number squared after you apply the isomorphism property. But negative one is not the square of any rational number. Public questions? Thanks. <laughs> <laughs>